So there's this uh, issue that a lot of the physicists and scientists bring up, that, and that is that what if there's infinite number of universes? So the reason that this issue came up is because, as you know, according to the Big Bang, the universe has a beginning, right? So you have, let me draw this a little bit better. So you have a, a beginning, so you have nothing, and then you have a beginning, and then you have the universe. And particularly uh, if you have tendencies of being an atheist, the idea that the universe has a beginning is very uncomfortable. So in theorizing, thinking out loud, in, in, in hypothesizing from an empirical perspective, well, you know, what if there's other universes like ours and we're just one out of like a, a set of infinite number of universes, just like there's an infinite set of atoms. Well, we have to go over the definition of infinite. Infinite has about three different definitions. I'm not going to go into the definitions of infinity, but infinity can be anything x plus one, x plus one, like human knowledge, always increasing. It's technically infinite. And the other definition of absolute infinite is absolute infinite, you know, the actual idea of infinite. And then there's everything in between. So, uh, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that um, if the universe had a beginning, is one way to look at it. So, but then other scientists said, well, what if there's infinite number of uni universes? Of course, no one will say that saying there's an infinite number of, there, what if there's an infinite number of universes uh, is like saying, what if there's unicorns? Because it's just an assumption, both are just assumptions not empirically based. No one has ever seen these other universes. But let's just take that uh, into account because from an atheistic perspective, uh, it makes sense because if there's no God and we live and we happen to be in a universe that's just right for us, to sustain life and have creativity. So therefore, there must have been other universes and we're just one of many of these billions of zillions of infinite number of universes. And one of them just happened to be right. So let's just uh, understand this this way. So let's say if, you know, to have life, because we're talking about the improbability of uh, life. So. Uh, let's say the improbability of life has 200 perimeters. What I mean by that is, for example, and this is what Carl S I think S is, is Sagan had said about 200, like things like the electromagnetic field, um, the right temperature, the right chemicals, the right, um, the right distance from, for example, from the, the right type of planet with the right type of sun, um, uh, having water, all these different things, having all these chemical reactions, having the right chemical reactions. And so creating the proper environment to actually have life. So, you know, it's very improbable that if there is one universe, okay, uh, that just by chance, randomly, all 200 of these just happen to be. So the idea was that what if there is some sort of generator that just generates these universes, just like a lot of bubbles, you can say. And a lot of those bubbles pop and a lot of the, I'm just giving you an example that one of the scientists gave actually. And there's a lot of these infinite number of bubbles and one of those bubbles, you know, if there's an infinite number of bubbles, then one of those bubbles is gonna have the right combination to have life as we know it on Earth. Um, Okay, so let's just take this argument. Uh, so now let's actually analyze the argument of the infinite universes uh, a little bit in more detail. Okay. Um, I also want to mention that if you have an infinite number of universes, what has to be kept in mind is that for any, any of these universes, to go from, you know, non-existence, I'm just going to name it one, so non-existence to existence, to existence. So this is phase one. Phase two, from existence as a physical, like it could be a dead rock, right? But to have existence of some sort to the right, 
chemicals, the right chemical reaction that just happened to be there. And then from the right chemical reactions to having life, and then having life to human life, conscious life, right? So, is this just a matter of probability, is the question. Meaning, uh, if there's an infinite number of universes, then, you know, there must be a few that meet these 200 criteria, and therefore you get this result. Is this how it is, or is there more to it? And this is what I want to explain. So now, you're going to have to listen to me carefully. If I have dice, right? My end, no matter how many times I throw dice, my result will be dice. So it'll be anywhere from 1 to 1 to 6 to 6, right? There's a range. Never am I going to get something else. I'm not going to throw, I can throw dice a billion times, an infinite number of times, absolute infinite number of times. Every time I throw a dice, my result will be somewhere within the range of a dice. I'm not going to throw dice and get flowers. This is the example I like to give. I'm not going to get throw dice and, and, and get eggs, right? Dice being not living and eggs being living. No matter how many times I throw the dice, my answer is going to always be in dice. So, what you have to understand, coming from non-existence to existence, okay, is just like you're throwing dice and you're getting flowers. You're throwing something and you're, the result is something completely different than from its normal range of, uh, of whatever it is. From existence of any sort to having the right chemicals, that is like not just throwing dice, but it's, and, and this will be even more clarified in, in the next thing that I say. And then same thing, from the right, chem the right chemicals being there to life. And then from life to each one of these phases is not like, it's not a number, of, it's not a matter of probability. It's not a matter of, oh, well, if you just do it enough times, you'll just eventually get it. You know, it's not like that. It is actually something, there has to be such a big shift from non-existence to existence that it's not a matter of probability. It's not even a matter of improbability or probability. It's just almost an impossibility, especially when you add the next point that I'm going to add to this. So this needs to be kept in mind. It sounds very good when you say, oh well, if, you know, hypothetically, what if, right? Uh, what if they're unicorns? So what if there are these infinite number of universes? And, uh, and then, you know, one, some of them will have the right combination of everything. But it's not that simple because a universe coming into existence, first of all, itself is a problem. And then having the right chemicals is a major, it's not like just some small shift, it's a major shift in, in, in paradigm. So, okay, then the other thing that I want you to consider where the problem becomes infinitely more problematic when you have infinitely more time, when you have infinitely more universes. Um, over here, I, I'd like to... Uh, mention something, that uh, if there are multiple universes, which is possible because we also believe in Rabbul Alameen, Lord of the Worlds, but as you know the universe is expanding, right? And the universe has been expanding since its birth. And in this time of expansion, the universe has not, as far as we know, bumped into any other universe. And the universe continues to expand exponentially, uh, faster and faster. And in this time, the universe has not hit any other universe. So if there's like a generator, for example, that's throwing out all these bubbles, right? One would assume that at some point that, you know, why has it we not bumped into another universe yet? Which also leads us to another problem, by the way, uh, which is that if the universe is expanding, and this is the universe, and it is expanding, right? Then what is it expanding to? Because if what is outside the universe is not the universe, and it is not something that is, for example, three or four dimensional, like we are, that would be, you know, why is it that uh, 
well, I won't go into the details of this, but if, if this is not universe, not universe, and this is universe, what are we expanding into? And we know for a fact that we're expanding. But what it does make clear is that whatever we're expanding into also has time and space, or has the ability to, or you can accept it as a miracle. It's miraculous that we're going from a state of time and space and we're expanding, expanding into nothing with time and space. That's like a miracle if there's, right? But either way, what I want to show you now is this, is that the more universes you add, the more probability you have, the more improbability you have. Let me explain to you what synchronicity is. Synchronicity is the idea that two things come together that are not related, but they come together in a meaningful way, especially in the human consciousness. Let me give you an example of that. You have a dream. You have a dream you saw your grandfather. In, in, your, in your dream, your grandfather knocks on the door, you open the door and you see grandfather. And grandfather never comes to your house. And he never kisses you. But in this dream, somebody knocks on the door, you're like, who is it? Wow, it's your grandfather. And then he kisses you. Now you wake up from your dream. Exactly at that time, at that time. This is what synchronicity is, has to do with time. This synchronicity has to do with time. Exactly as soon as you wake up, you hear a door knock. You think, it couldn't be. It couldn't be, right? And because my dream has nothing to do with reality. The door knocks. You open the door. It's your grandfather. Your grandfather never kisses. He kisses you. Now you take two things that are not related to each other, absolutely two random events, and you bring them together in a meaningful way. You make meaning out of two random events. This is called synchronicity. When two things come together in time to, at the exact right time to become meaningful. When this happens, not in a psychological perspective, but when this happens in a scientific perspective, it is more impossible with the more number of universes and with more time. What I mean by that is, let me just give you an example. When you increase the number of universes, this is the problem that you reach. So let's say if there is two clocks. Okay? One clock has only four, hour, four hours, for example. The other clock has an infinite number of... Uh, it, it, it's infinite, because the infinite number of universes means infinite time. So, let's say if hydrogen is made at one o'clock, oxygen is made at two o'clock, the chances of it coming together at three o'clock are, however improbable, more probable. Right? But as you increase universes, because as so many universes, or even within one universe, the more the time is, the more improbable two things or two events are going to come together. So when you say, oh, well, you know, to make the probability more, you know, if we had an infinite number of universes, these two, three, two hundred characteristics will come together, the chances of them actually coming together become less. For example, hydrogen and oxygen coming together, which creates water, are less with more universes with more time than there is with less universes. So let's say in this universe, uh, just randomly somehow, hydrogen was made, let's say, at one o'clock, okay? And then oxygen was made, let's say, at five o'clock, right? Now, the, so much time has lapsed that it's useless for the fact that hydrogen had come into existence in the first place. Hydro oxygen had to come in at a certain time interval for there to be a proper reaction between the two before they would just like be randomly in different places. That's also another issue, by the way. There's the issue of time and place, to be in the right place at the right time. And also, so time is one element and space. So, so the more space you create and the more time you create, the chances of the right things coming together these 200 things actually decrease exponentially than actually increasing it. So that's one thing that I wanted to share with you because, um, because these infinite universes are not all there at one time, right? I mean, it's like bubbles. One comes, and the next comes, the next comes, the next comes, the next comes, and it can, continues that way if there's an infinite number of universes. That means time is also infinite. That means the chances of two things coming together are even less and less and less with each universe coming into existence. Um, what are the chances that if there's an infinite number of universes that, uh, that 
there was all these jumps from non-existence to existence and existence to right, the right chemicals and then from the right chemicals to life and to human beings on the one side of the equation. This is one thing that needs to be kept in mind. Second is that within the time-space complex, the more time you actually give yourself with more universes, the less chances of things to actually come together. Not to also mention, this is only the time aspect, right? The other aspect is space, right? And then that, that out of the infinite universes, because, okay, if there's 200, for example, 200 things that have to come together, and let's say there's 200 universes, right? So there's a chance, let's say, for example, each of these 200 elements, for this is just an example, this is, if these 200 elements would be in 200 universes, right, is more likely, okay, than these two elements coming together, because more universes means more time, more separatedness of time, than if there were, let's say, a thousand universes. It's actually the opposite. The opposite is true. Because the more time and the more universes you create, the less time you're giving for the right chemicals to come together. I hope that makes this clear. So there's two aspects. There's the aspect of time and space. And in terms of space, the more you are spread out in terms of space, the more number of universes, the less chance everything will fall together at the right time, okay, and then jump all these major ships. All this, it doesn't matter. Like I said, if you throw a dice, infinite number of times you'll get dice. You'll never get flat flower. But this is what you get got. These 200, what we look retrospectively, we say, oh, 200 things? Oh, okay, that's how, that's how we got human life, because we have these 200 things. And therefore, you know, if there's an infinite number of universes, we'll find one that has the number of, the right number of elements together. But actually, the more universes you have, the more time you have, the more space you have, the less chances you have of the right things coming together at the right time. And if it's infinite, that means everything is infinitely away from each other. Meaning every, everything that would be generated, everything that would be made. For example, if there's 200 elements that have to be made, and there's only 20 universes, right? If there are elements made, let's say, random elements are made, how they're made, we're not going to that. But if, if there, these 200 are divided into this, 20, there's a greater chance that one of these universes will just get all 200. If it's 200, less chance. If it's 1,000, even less chance. Okay? In the same way, you have this I, the whole I, idea of time. So that has to do with space. This has to do with time. And even if just out of infinite universes, which means infinite amount of time, which means everything is infinitely that much more complex, that much more farther away from each other, which means that it's more unlikely that two things will come together to create anything meaningful and then go through this process of from non-existence to existence to the right chemicals and then those right chemicals having the right reactions to create life and then life to human beings. It's infinitely, it's, it's not like I said, it's not like throwing dice and you get dice. It's like throwing dice and, uh, and then, you, so, so this part is like, if for somehow, synchronicity takes place. If there is an infinite number of universes, or two, or one universe, however big this even one universe is, if the right, even in this just one universe, for two chemicals to come together at the right place, at the right time, at the right moment, right after the Big Bang, right, with the right amount of gravity and the, all these other elements that had to be there, for them to come together at the exact same time, two things that are not related coming together, Right? Oxygen has nothing to do with hydrogen, but they came together at the right time to make something meaningful. That's what I mean. The more there is distance from them, the more universes you add, the more time you add, the less chances they will actually come together in a meaningful way. So, and then, besides the space problem and the time problem, and, that, and then coming together in a meaningful way, you have this problem where it's not just that the universe came into existence, in the right chemicals, but then you have these major shifts that are completely unexplainable. There's nothing, the only way I can explain it is if you're throwing dice and you get flowers. So the issue of the problem of the infinite number of universes um, 
I don't think really solves the problem. It actually complicates the problem. Really complicates the problem. Because that means that everything was that much more infinitely away from each other to, to actually have the right uh, combination of everything. Right? That our universe just happened to out of infinite. Right? When everything's infinitely more away in terms of space and time. Uh, that this universe was the one that got it all. Okay.